Hey everybody, welcome to Average Joe Preparedness. My name's Rick and I'm an Average Joe. Now it's been a little bit since my last video. I uh, want to apologize, but I'm sure like most of you, I've been busy. Uh, I have a life, uh, holidays, uh, election, uh, getting things ready for winter, which I'm doing. So yeah, it's been a while. And so I want to apologize. I'll try to get these videos out a little bit more often. I don't know. Again, life has its own way and we just have to deal with that. So hopefully you understand. First thing we're going to go over is promises made, promises kept. In one of my previous videos, maybe more than one, I don't know. Uh, I talked about camping food or survival food that I was going to test some of it out and let you guys know what it tastes like to me. I also cautioned you that uh, my life has been one that I have eaten things, long stories guys, I have eaten things that some people might not eat. So I'm going to test out things, but uh, no, the opinion I'm giving you is mine. So I highly recommend that you uh, test these things out and see what works for you. But I, I'm going to give you a general overview of some of the camping survival foods, whatever, probably a lot of mainstream stuff, but some other things that aren't so mainstream. And uh, if nothing else, I'll introduce you to them. So that way you guys can understand where they're coming from, maybe. And, uh, but anyways, I got one here and we're gonna test it out today. Now, hopefully you understand a lot of survival foods, a lot of camping foods, mostly it's the survival foods. They have a, a high calorie count because they're for survival. That's what they're there for. So understand, I can't get a bunch of these and test them out in the same day. Otherwise, you know, I'm gonna lose my girlish figure here because it's a lot of calories to pack in. So I'm gonna probably do like one at a time for the high calorie ones, maybe some other ones I might be doing two. But uh, today, we're only doing one. It's a survival food and an emergency survival food. So we're just gonna do one today. So on today's menu, uh, this is SOS Emergency Food Rations. I don't have my readers on, they're over there, so. And I don't get anything from these guys. This is, I don't make money off of anything. But uh, these are what I keep in my car. So as of now, that's the only thing I, uh, the only place I keep them is, I keep these in my car specifically. And the reason I got them is I went out and did a little research you guys can, the internet's there, everybody can do their own thing, but uh, they're inexpensive. This is like five bucks and change, I think, as of now. So it may change, I don't know. So it's like five bucks and change. Uh, they're approved by the uh, Coast Guard. And if I'm not mistaken, the original design for these were for like uh, lifeboats. You know, you put them in there and you leave them for a long time. This has got a five year shelf life, minimum. That's what it's recommended. And uh, then they f are for boats. So then regular people on boats uh, started getting them and now you can just get them offline. You don't necessarily need to have a boat. So this is nine bars. It's 400 calories per bar. There is not a lot of nutritional value in these because this is an emergency food. Please be aware of that. The whole point of these is to keep you alive. That's what these are. These are basically emergency food rations. This is not camping food per se. Like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna, no, no, no. So as I said, nine bars, 400 calories a piece. Most of the calories come from fat and it's oils and stuff that preserve it so that way it lasts for five years. And uh, again, it's like five bucks and change. So what I did was I got these five years ago, just a little over five years ago. Uh, I put one in each one of our cars. It's just there and that's it. I forget about it for about five years. And then I replace it. These are the replacements right here that I got. And this right here is one of the bars. They're individually wrapped on the inside. This bar is over five years old because I pulled it out of the vehicles. I replaced the ones in the vehicles with these. Obviously this one's still got to go out there. So I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat this bar for you, just for you. Now again, be aware, I have eaten things because I was poor, because I was in the military for a long time that you guys might not agree with. So I'm gonna give you my take on this, 
But remember, this is an emergency ration. That's all this is for. This is to keep you alive. This is 400 calories to burn off so that you don't starve. It's an emergency ration. Please, everybody, everybody got that. This is not enjoyment food. This is not a candy bar. This is not, yeah. All right, so let's get to it. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and eat it. Now, this is probably where we get to, you should edit your videos better, Rick. You should like set everything up so it's perfect and it's not what I do. I actually let you guys see how things work or don't work. If you guys have watched some of my videos, there's some fails there, but I figure it's best to just show you and not edit everything so it's all pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna try this out. You guys ready? We'll see what happens. Now, to be honest, for full disclosure, I've actually eaten these before. Oh. And I've eaten things that are worse. Old school MREs, guys. Seriously, oatmeal bars. Smells like coconut, if I'm not mistaken. It's one of the oils that they use. Hmm. It's dry. Hmm. Coconut. If you're not a fan of coconut, don't get this. But again, it's for an emergency. Mm. Coffee. So, it's dry, but I've had drier. Tastes like coconut, it's still sweet though. So, I mean, it's not bad. I'd eat this thing. I don't know if I'd choose a candy bar over it. Mm. Mm. That being said, mm. I've told you I've eaten terrible things. This ain't even up there. This ain't even top 10 of the bad things I've eaten. So, the point is, five bucks and change. You understand what I'm saying? We'll go over it in a sec. Being prepared, being a prepper, preparedness, whatever word you want to use. But being prepared or being a prepper is about taking responsibility for yourself in my view. So five bucks and change, five bucks and change. You take this, you throw it in your car. That's what I use it for. If you decide to use it for that, you can throw it in a, uh, there's many things like a get home bag. This is a lot for a get home bag. If you understand what a get home bag is, I think we went over a basic one before a bug out bag, a, you can keep them in your house, I guess, for emergencies. The, the point being is it's $5 and change. That's that's what a, a latte costs. And it is, what are we looking at? 3,600 calories in here. That's one person uh, for extreme physical activity. Or if you're not doing much, again, in a survival situation, if you're just hanging out waiting to be rescued, this will last you a lot longer. So it's peace of mind. Again, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna throw it in my car for five years and I'm not thinking about it. You with me? Just so you know. You don't have to get this. Again, I don't get nothing off of it. There's a couple other ones out there, but uh, taste test, taste test approved. Okay, now that we've gone over that, I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit. I'm gonna finish eating this, by the way, when you guys aren't around. Now, uh, let's cover some things. Again, it's been a while. So let's talk about the garden. Uh, I've done videos. We'll do more videos on the garden. If you guys are new to the channel, please understand that growing something, it takes, and again, you guys can Google all this information, but I'm just going to recap it for you. It takes time to learn how to grow things. They say three to four years. Some, some say two to three years. Some say three to four years. Trust me, my failure rate, it's gonna take three to four years to grow something. So if you think you're just gonna grow something, don't, you're setting yourself up for failure, you're just gonna get disappointed. So this year, successes, green beans, okay? Uh, especially the, uh, not the bush beans, I, I got beans off the bush beans, it, it, was, it was decent, but the uh, vine beans, oh my God, I learned lessons on, I'm gonna be planting them, uh, at different times, I'm going to be planting them away from each other because they just went crazy. Green beans. I can grow green beans. <laughs> Leaf lettuce. That's another success. Depends on where you plant it because it's uh, it can really be affected by the sun. 
and the sun is probably the biggest thing that affects it. But leaf lettuce, I can grow leaf lettuce. We had, I ate lettuce basically all through the summer, right up until not that long ago. So, and again, I've learned that I'm gonna plant them at different times, so that way they're not all going at the same time and I'm just, just too much lettuce for me to eat. So, leaf lettuce was a success. Uh, onions. They're like a bulb plant. And so we've got, I've still got lots of onions and I'm just letting them go. Uh, there's some out there right now, there's a lot. I can harvest if I want, or we'll just let them go and see what happens next year. They should come back. Should, knock on wood, we'll find out about that. So onions, planting onion seeds or onion bulbs. Onions work well. They apparently like it when it's a little cooler. They, it looked like they died off in the middle of the summer. The next thing I know they came back. Uh, when the summer started cooling off. So success story, onions. Another new one this year that was a success is cucumbers. Now I'm gonna call it a success. It could have been better. Cucumbers, and I should have known this, and I'm sure some of you will probably be laughing. Cucumbers grow all, they just go. See, I tried to go them up a trellis because supposedly you can, they don't like, they on the ground. So next year I'm gonna plant them on the corners of my, I have square foot gardens. I'll be planting them on the corners and basically letting them run out of the planter. I had them running across the planter and they're choking out other stuff. So, so they can have their way. They need room. They need room to run. So the plant itself can be planted in the square foot garden or one square foot. However, it goes. So did a little experimentation and found out how I could make it go around and grow out in places I don't walk and don't need. So, but cucumbers, I actually, we've eaten the cucumbers, made salads out of them, uh, put, dip them in ranch, whatever, and I've actually got some in some pickle juice, making them into pickles. Carrots, uh, this is my second year growing carrots. Everything else I think is a first year. So second year growing carrots, and yeah, a little better than uh, last year. Again, it's where you plant them, and the plants that are around, I'm covering them up with shade, or, and so I just let them go right up until we had a little frost come in and had to pull them up after that because basically they were done. So carrots, not bad. You know, all these things can go into a salad. Uh, other successes, do, 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 do. To be determined is going to be broccoli. So I've got two broccoli plants out there and apparently they're biannuals. And you're supposed to cut them back and we got none of those little tree things, little things on the, on the broccoli this year. So my hope is the plants come back next year. We'll wait and see, I've got two. And again, it's an experiment. This is all like a science fair experiment to me for right now. And uh, we'll see how it goes next year. And hopefully broccoli will be a success. Now continued successes from, from last year. Uh, onion chives, which are basically onions, it doesn't matter. I have a bushel, a bunch of onion chives, a plant, a bunch of them together. And it came back this year and all year. I had enough chives for like the neighborhood. It, it's, yeah, I dried some and it doesn't matter, fresh ones. So chives, chives are easy, uh, at least where I am. I think they're easy anywhere. If you guys wanna try them, you don't need that much, trust me. And then oregano, I think I mentioned in another video, it came back, it was here all year and flourished and yes, fresh, mm, the smell of fresh oregano. Uh, I just cut it back, I'll probably cut it back one more time before winter sets in and knock on wood, hopefully it'll come back next year. And then asparagus. Now asparagus takes, a, when I said it takes like two to three or three to four years to figure out how to grow something, some things actually take two to three, three to four years to grow. And one of those is asparagus. So I've got two square foot things. I've got two of those with asparagus in them. One of them is in its second year this year, and next year will be third. One of them is its first year. However, I planted it not from a seed. I actually planted it from a little cutting. So for all I know, it's second year too, because it looks a lot like the other one. We'll wait and see. But basically it takes three to four years for it to grow, to get those thick sprouts that come up and you cut them off. And supposedly, we'll wait and see, I'll let you know. Once it's established, it's kind of like a weed. And I don't mean it spreads out, but I mean, it just, it's hardy and it just keeps coming back. And if you cut off the little spears, they continue to grow. I don't know, we'll find out. I'm hoping, knock on wood, next year, 
they'll actually be, because right now it grows and it's really thin. It's not what you know as asparagus. So hopefully mm, next year, yay, we'll find out. In which case that would have been three years before you can grow asparagus. If, if it happens before you can grow asparagus, it's actually edible. Okay, failures. A semi-failure, we'll call it that, corn. I tried that uh, three sisters thing, but with two sisters, it doesn't matter. I grew the green beans, the vine beans, by the corn, mixed up in the corn. And it's supposed to like grow up the corn stalks and they're supposed to help each other by putting nutrients in the ground. Yeah, the beans just choked out the corn. I got like one or two, three little ears of corn and it would just didn't work. That was on that over there. Over here, where a square foot garden, supposedly in a square foot garden, you can plant corn. It did not do well. I think it needs a little bit more space. I'm not gonna try it again. So that experiment's done in the, in the square foot garden. I, I got a area, I think I've talked about it before, along the fence that's wasted space. So uh, next year, I'm gonna try corn again, but not with the green beans strangling it out. So green beans are gonna be separate. I'm planting them at different times. The corn is going to be over here. So basically that was pretty much a semi-failure. And uh, potatoes. Yeah, I got little potatoes. I ate some, don't get me wrong. They were small, but potatoes, a failure. But with each failure, you, you learn something. The potatoes, I found out that uh, I don't have enough uh, drainage in the buckets because I'm growing them in the five-gallon buckets. I'm not growing them in the ground yet. I'm still doing the five-gallon bucket experiment. So I didn't have enough drainage. They, they kind of like rotted in there. It was too moist. So I'll try it again next year. We'll see what happens. More holes drilled in the buckets. Less after I initially water them, then I'll just let them be watered by rain or the sprinklers if the sprinklers happen to hit it. And uh, we'll see what happens. So next year, we'll try another experiment with potatoes. And uh, But this year, that was a failure. And spinach, spinach didn't do too well this year. I, I got to figure out how to grow it because again, it is one of those things that's affected by the sun. Try it again next year because I'm looking to get those things that you can eat and spinach, you just cut the leaves off. That's why I use the leaf spinach. I mean, uh, leaf lettuce, because I can just cut it off. I can eat it onions. I can just pull carrots. I can just pull the cucumbers once they get big enough. I'm looking for things that I can actually eat. So again, it's just like a science fair experiment right now. However, I'm happy I am making progress in things. So lots of experimentation going on, growing things, some successes, some failures. We'll wait and see what happens next year. My recommendation to you is if, you, if you've got, it doesn't take up a lot of space, guys. You can do it in buckets or the square foot garden. It's one little square foot, literally. Or you can do it in pots or those dead spaces in your yards. I recommend trying to grow something. If nothing else, from this perspective over here, let's say the left, we'll call it the left, whatever, I don't care. Left, you know, it's growing your own food and it, it's uh, organic, non-GMO. You know, I don't use pesticides and I don't use, it's, it's natural. I, I use uh, uh, natural growth products. Uh, I have, uh, what do you call that? When the leaves and the, they, they, they disintegrate and you put it in your, Compost. Yeah, so I call it compost. Uh, so it's a natural sort of food and I can just go out there and eat it. And uh, I think that's a good thing. But all the way over here, you need to be more self-efficient or self-sufficient and be efficient in what you're doing. So learn how to grow your own food. If nothing else, it's like a little hobby, a little something, something. You go out in the backyard, it's not that big of a deal. I recommend it. Give it a shot. It is going to take you a couple of years though. Now, finally, give me a second. Hmm. Let's talk about something a little bit more serious. And that's uh, two things. The first one is, or both of them are what's going on in the world. Uh, the coronavirus. I am not a medical professional. So whatever I'm telling you is my opinion only. Please do your own research or whatever. So disqualifier there, whatever it's called. Uh, it's affecting everyone in one way or another. Now, I hope everybody just finds everyone out there healthy. I hope you're uh, dealing with, with it the best you can. Uh, like pretty much anything that affects your body, any sort of disease or virus or whatever, living a healthy lifestyle is going to help you out. It's either going to prevent in some cases or help you 
uh, fight it off and help you recover. So uh, again, I hope this finds you well when it comes to, or as well as you can be when it comes to the coronavirus. The reason I'm bringing it up is because it, it, it's affecting everyone, not just, uh, not just uh, having to wear masks and limited things. All of these things add up to angst, it, uh, tension, anger, uh, negative, it doesn't matter. Enter any negative emotion here that's being caused by this. That's the focus, and we've talked about it before. Negative emotion blocks higher brain function. Ooh, and it's everywhere. Everybody is being affected by this in one way or another, and you can see how big it is. There are a lot of unhappy people out there because of this, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong or good or bad. No, I am saying it's bad, but not right or wrong. The point is try not to let it get to you as much as you can. Negative emotion blocks higher brain function, and you can't think. But know this, even if you can keep it down, keep thinking, just imagine how many people out there aren't. Imagine how many people out there are not thinking. So you have angry people, angry, frustrated people that are not thinking. Lots of them. That's what you need to be aware of. Then you add on top of that an election, a contested election. And if you guys look at the date, this is like a few days after the election and it's still going on. Now understand this, I don't care, okay? Left wing, right wing, same bird, all right? I, I read that on the internet and I was like, that's very fitting. So I don't care. Politics, I'm, I'm an advocate for small government and zero politics. Politicians are liars as far as I'm concerned. That's their job. So I, I don't deal with them at all. One of the reasons why I'm a prepper, if you want to call them that, call me that, is because I believe in self-reliance, self-accountability. I try to do everything I can to take care of myself. I don't want the government helping me. Does that make sense? There's a joke and it says, the scariest words you'll ever hear is, I'm the government and I'm here to help. Yeah, my family's worked for the government. I work for the government. Let me tell you what, I've known lots of people that work for the government. Nobody who works for the government believes the government can help you because they know how it works. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're, no, no, government's not gonna help you. Now that being said, there's a lot of people that do believe, you know, they're over here and they're Democrats or they're over here and they're Republicans or Libertarians or there's a bunch of other ones. But uh, the point being is the angst, the tension, the if you guys don't see the hate out there, if you can't, I can, I can go on my feed on my phone, it's up there, or I can turn on the television in five minutes, I can get me uh, uh, three months worth of hate. It's just out there. People hate and uh, there's fear and hate and fear and hate and fear and hate. And if you don't know what a death spiral is, I can't help you. You might wanna look that up. So this isn't getting any better. As a matter of fact, uh, my neighbor, I was out working in the yard and, uh, a neighbor I talk to rarely, but I mean, he's a nice guy. And I'm pretty sure he's over here on the left side. And we were talking about the virus and we were talking about politics. And he, even him, he's over here. And we were discussing how it's not ending, okay? The anger, the, the peaceful protest, this isn't going to end. I mean, I've asked, and if anybody wants to put it in the comments section, if you can tell me one thing that's going to solve this that I haven't figured out and I'm really good at logistics, let me know. Put it down in the comments section, please. I will be very thankful. So anyways, we're having a discussion and uh, I was talking to him about that, that no, I don't see an end in sight. And he's like, well, you know, I was thinking that maybe if the Democrats got elected and I just waited and then he said, but you know what? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to do it either. Exactly. There isn't a cure, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know who benefits from fear and hate. And there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care who benefits from it. All I care about is who doesn't benefit. And that's me. And that's you. And that's everybody else that's out there. So I try to keep things calm and find my zen and not let myself get upset because then I can't think. And I highly recommend you do the same. So insofar as COVID and insofar as 
and next year it's probably going to be something else or COVID's going to warp just like uh, just like viruses do, you know, they change. But anyways, and insofar as politics, and I think I brought it up before, is I only bring up things like this, not to play, a, what do they call it, like prepper porn, you know, to get you guys all fearful. I don't want you fearful. The reason I bring it up is so that you understand other people are fearful. And when other people are, they're not thinking. And when they're not thinking, that can affect you. So I hope everybody's doing well out there as best they can. I, I, just, I'm, I'm sending you positive vibes. I'm thinking positive things. Hopefully you are too. Uh, winter is coming. Not to make a joke off of a television show, but winter is coming. And so that's the next thing. You need to be ready for it. Uh, prep your house, prep your car. Maybe we'll get a, a video on prepping your car for winter. I, I'm, it's kind of simple, you know. Uh, make sure your battery terminals are clean, uh, antifreeze, your windshield wiper fluid, change it out if you have regular, because you want the stuff if you're in, or going to be someplace where the temperature gets low, you don't want the regular stuff in there. But uh, yeah, we're moving in that direction. So winter is coming. Take uh, responsibility for your life. Be prepared, start thinking about it. Don't rely on others. That way you are not relying on the system. If something bad happens, that way you can help other people and limited resources, we've discussed this before. So, uh, okay, let's try to end on a positive note. Guys, uh, be happy, be positive, be prepared.